Hello everyone, uh, I'm Surya Ganguly and welcome to the first course of process training, Avoiding Blunders. I was thinking which course to start with. We, we wanted to start with uh, some courses in process training and I thought this is something which no one is immune from. Everybody blunders. You take any player, they do blunder. So uh, are we going to avoid blunders? Yes and no. So we are not going to eliminate the blunders. Uh, this will happen, but we can reduce it. We can reduce the uh, frequency of blunders. There will be eight different chapters, as you can see here, um, seeing from opponent's perspective, going broad, going uh, going broad before going deep, and so on. Uh, you will solve more than hundred positions. There will be test at the very uh, at the final chapter. Let me break down these chapters from uh, 1 to 8 before I show you some sample positions. So, first, the very first chapter we start with seeing from opponent's perspective. What is it? Basically, asking what is my opponent threatening, but it is immediately connected with the second question do I need to stop it? Because if you just ask that what is my opponent threatening, what is my opponent threatening, then your game could be very defensive. You might not be able to attack when it is needed because you are constantly thinking what my opponent is threatening and addressing that. But do you need to stop it? Maybe the threat is really not a threat. Continue with your own idea. And then the final point, uh, if I were in their shoes, what steps would have I taken? So basically thinking from opponent's perspective, okay, maybe he's, uh, he has given some material or he's, he has given some weakness, but if I was at his place, would I have done this? So does he have any hidden idea? So thinking from that perspective, you will solve positions here based on this thing. The next chapter is very practical, going broad before going deep. Now, if you notice that, uh, take some of your games, take 10 games, 20 games, and see where the mistakes are happening. Is it happening when you are calculating always at the end of the calculation? or at the beginning, like move two, move three, we are missing something. Usually, uh, you will notice that it's happening at the beginning. Maybe you miss the second move, maybe you miss the third move, sometimes maybe the first move. So, calculation errors tend to occur primarily in the early stages. So, before going deep, pause a little bit, step back, and go broader before digging deep, because it is very much possible you went very deep, you came back and you see, uh, some easy solution. So we speak about that in the second chapter. Many blunders happens because of this. We went very far in some one particular line and then missed, uh, let's say, second move candidate. Third, when emotions take over. Now, this is super important. If you have an approach during the game, oh, I am winning, oh, he's playing bad, I am winning, or oh, no, I am losing, I played such a terrible move, that has no connection with the position. And your moves will be. Uh, filled with emotions and it might lose objectivity. There are so many examples on this when this simply this fact that I am winning or I am losing takes over. Second, adopting a result-oriented mindset. That is, you are playing for a draw. Like you are playing probably a weaker, uh, stronger player. You want to make a draw, gain some rating. Or you are playing for championship or norm. But you are playing for a draw or playing for a win. In this case, once again, we tend to see only those variations. Like if you're playing for win, you might tend to see only winning variations and missing out opponent's resource. As a result, blunders might happen. Then reflecting on the past with regret. It is possible you had a great position, you made a mistake, now you have to play for a draw. You need to make peace with your past so that you can focus on your present. It could also be that you lost the previous game and now you are not in a mood to play. You are feeling very bad about the previous game. There is no connection between the position and past. So, uh, reflecting basically at the past is not uh, helping. The same, anticipating the future result and feeling anxious. You are thinking too much about what will happen uh, next. Don't forget the basics. You will be amazed to see how many games uh, strongest of players, world champions, grandmasters, 2700 players. There are like so many players in classical time control, missing the basics, that is check, capture threats. These things gets uh, filtered out at a subconscious level. 
So don't rule it out. Explore, check, capture threads, forcing moves. Uh, it might sound very basic, but once you see the chapter, you will know exactly what I uh, what I mean. Like there are so many, so many examples. Simply not pausing uh, for and asking, you know, the checks, the captures, threads, forcing moves, and so on. Uh, next, the unimaginable and the root cause of it. There are some blunders which are extremely difficult to explain. There might not be any explanation. This is one of the most important segment. Like nobody is going to save you if there is fatigue, there is lack of energy, uh, you didn't sleep well. You need to take care of this. So fitness above everything. I will speak more on this uh, in those chapters. But you cannot compromise on fitness and uh, say that, you know, I was preparing too much, so I did not, I could not sleep, I could not do exercise. In a short term, it might work, but in a long term, it's never going to work. Time pressure, of course, we need to avoid time pressure. So we'll speak about that on this chapter. And then there are blind spots, like some moves that just gets blocked. So that is also another reason of blundering. Why do we miss unusual moves? This will be the sixth chapter. Unknown patterns, patterns that we have not seen. And also some moves again gets filtered at a subconscious level. Like he's not going to play knight a1. Or let's say he's not going to give his good bishop for my bad bishop. And it gets filtered out. We don't uh, uh, look at these moves. Being judgmental. He's not going to push his pawn and weaken his king. So we have this fine sense of understanding. Which might... Uh, work as some sort of hindrance where, uh, you know, we don't consider these kind of moves. So that could also result in blunders. Psychological errors. This is a very common thing, which happens op in opening, middle game, end game, memory playing the trick. You think you are playing out of memory, but maybe there is a minor difference. But, uh, you know, we we are trying, we think like, Hey, I have prepared this line and queen was always going in f6. But maybe there is a slight change and their queen doesn't go to f6. It goes somewhere else. But we play this anyways. Even here you will see so many strong players uh, losing uh, out, just out of the opening or making some devastating blunder right in the opening. You'll, in fact, you will see one in the introduction file itself. Then half remembering, half calculating. You saw somewhere this pattern or this variation. So you are sort of remembering and you're also half calculating so you're neither here nor there as a result blunder and then i have seen similar things before i have seen this pattern i've seen this move that uh, also we will discuss finally the last chapter will be test yourself which will be mixed of everything by the way there could be there are many positions which actually fits different categories like it could be emotion as well as let's say don't forget the basics or it could be um, when, um, uh, like, for example, this one, like psychological errors could also go with uh, emotions. But I had to pick different position for different uh, groups. So I segregated it uh, that way. And the final chapter will be test yourself where everything gets sort of mixed up and you'll get a bunch of positions which you'll have to solve. Uh, the goal. As you can see, no, we are not getting rid of blunders. This is inevitable. This will happen. Even if you're Magnus Carlsen or Vishyan, it will still happen. Uh, their games are also included. Uh, but you can definitely reduce it for sure. And difference between training and playing. Uh, in training, you will know that this is the critical position. In playing, you will not know when the critical position is coming. So we will also discuss uh, about this in this particular chapter. So with that in mind, uh, let's do some positions here uh, as a trailer, let's say. So my first position is this. Black to play. Uh, sorry, it's uh, here it's uh, white to play. White played the move, queen f3. And now it's black to play. So uh, think a bit and tell me how uh, would you continue as black. So. Typically, you will do the same in the uh, in all the chapters. Uh, you'll pause the video and don't try to solve it as a training position. Every time, ask yourself how I would play in a tournament game. 
maybe this movie will make in one second maybe this movie will think for 10 minutes but do exactly the way you would do in a tournament so i cannot see you how you are performing and honestly i don't care much how you are performing in the training but my idea is how you do in tournaments so this course should help you to play better in tournaments it is okay to fail here but please don't fail in the uh, like please improve in the tournament games so for that approach every position as if you are playing a game black to play okay assuming you stop the pause the video and you found the right move and if you spotted queen a2 excellent uh, that you spotted this but if you got excited and said hey queen a2 i found in one second i have a bad news for you white just played queen f3 in the game queen a2 was played white played queen d1 and black resigned now i did this uh, like psychologically imagine if i would ask you this position by flipping the board it's white to play you would spot queen d1 almost instantly but it happens so that if we spot queen a2 sometimes we just get excited and we tend to miss this kind of moves if you did not spot queen a2 at all that's also not ideal it's not like uh uh not 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 in a negative way but definitely it means that you are not considering the basics the forcing moves we have a chapter on this so we'll speak more on this but essentially you need to consider this it takes less than 1 second but you have to consider this kind of moves so what is the best move there are there are several moves just don't play this you could play yeah you could you could play rook c7 you could probably play even bishop f6 it's slightly worse but if white takes then we can take white doesn't have any concrete threat but white is better but we don't have to lose in one move moving on to the next example and uh, quite a shocking one actually so this one really fits in with the psychological errors like i have seen this somewhere uh i know this is theory and sort of mixing up like half remembering half calculating and also missing unusual moves this is karyakin aronian from vikanzi 2017 karyakin played the move bishop b3 we can see this from white's perspective bishop b3 what is the threat it's not even clear because if knight e5 takes takes then there is always bishop f2 king f2 queen f6 sorry queen f6 check and the e5 rook will be uh, will be lost so black could play different moves black played f6 white played b4 black played bishop f7 and the game continued what went wrong that's the question something went wrong somewhere so pause it and try to figure out what went wrong in this variation take as much time as needed i am not even saying where it went wrong so i hope you found this after f6 here is the thing after f6 d4 is such an automating move this is under pin you are going for this pawn everything seems perfect so we have seen this pattern but there is another pattern which we have never seen and also it's unusual it looks ugly it is positionally disgusting but it wins a piece in one move c4 c4 would have been resignation this is move 11 white is 2785 black is 2780 it's karyakin aronian so if knight b4 c5 game over take take and b6 bishop is gone so blunders it's mutual blunder karyakin also didn't like when levon played this karyakin also took it for granted and uh, didn't see this uh next example such thing can also happen in end game this one is a uh, one of my most embarrassing end game ever and there is a very funny uh, anecdote with this so that's why i wanted to show this in the introduction video first of all about this position the concept is if black gets king f1 and we cannot kick the king out and subsequently gets f2 
we, he will get into Lucena position and he is completely winning. So with that note, Rook B1 is the most natural move. You stop King F1. If he plays Rook, F, Rook E1, give a check again. King E3, he will give a check again. And if King E1, sorry, King F1, there is King G3. Next Rook F2 is coming. Simplest way to draw, like elementary. You can put the Rook almost anywhere else. Like imagine I play Rook B8. Uh, King F1, King G3, F2. Now, normally this should be winning. But there is king f3. The point is after king e1, I can give check and let's say just rook f1. And if you play king g1, trying to queen the pawn, there is rook g8 check. And again, I can move the rook somewhere. So this is also a draw. Now, this particular draw works only because after king g1, there is a check. Which means in the initial position, everything else will also be a draw except rook b3. So, in the starting position, rook b1 will draw because it stops king f1 directly. But also, all these moves, rook b4, rook b5, everything else will also end in a draw except rook b3, which is what happened in the game. Uh, I was a GM, I was 25-74, I was playing against Nisipiano. And this is move 77. The funny anecdote is, uh, our end games were very bad. Like in, uh, when there was this pre-Olympiad camp, Vladimirov came. And uh, most of the Indian chess players, like with exception of few, like Hari, Sashi, for example, okay, of course not counting Anand, uh, back then, uh, we had terrible end game knowledge, like really, really terrible. So Vladimirov was training us, you know, like uh, he was showing us all uh, rook pawn endgames, different kind of endgames. And we solved so many endgames uh, at that particular camp. Uh, like there was this one particular camp which lasted for one month and we I don't even know how many how many endgames we solved. During the game, okay, there were, there were some time scramble. I remembered Vladimirov saying, like I could literally visibly... Uh, I, I could like I could uh, see his image like showing in a demonstration board you know back then and saying rook b3 is the only move and that's all I remember yeah like there's a vague memory rook b3 is the only move I played rook b3 the thing is I forgot the second part of the sentence rook b3 is the only move that loses <laughs> and instead of calculating instead of you know having this hey I have seen this position rook b3 is the only move I played rook b3 immediately. Only move, of course, that loses. Ended up losing this game. Very embarrassing, but um, yeah, half mem half remembering, half calculating. Finally, um, of course, I'm not letting you go. Uh, I'm not finishing this uh, this course without adding this game. Uh, this happened in 2023. I had this idea of making this course uh, for a long time, but I didn't know I'll be a victim of this. Uh, here in World Rapid, I ended up playing knight e5 and got mated with queen f2. Uh, believe it or not, uh, that's what happened in the game. What is the explanation? Why it happened? Well, I don't want to reveal everything here. But for sure, you are going to hear about this and many more. Uh, we will cover all of this. Uh, there will be lots of tests. There will be lots of practical tips. So I look forward uh, to seeing you all in the main chapter. And um, yeah, that, that, that will be it. By the way, this uh, background photo you are seeing, it's, uh, uh, it's actually a real photo. Mm, I went to Ladakh. And this is in Pangong Lake uh, where, uh, you know, everything was frozen. It was like minus 24. And we had chessboard and I had this idea like, you know, let's set it. And you can see uh, a Berlin uh, position there. Uh, anyway, um, see you soon in the main chapters. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, before I go, I also want to say...
uh, once you completed the course each time you will see this this photo is taken in gibraltar uh, they used to have these games on um, huge giant board and this particular uh, pose uh, behind uh, beside me there was also nigel happened when one of our team members made a huge blunder and then we were like this so hopefully you will avoid this uh, situation and uh, yeah once again disclaimer we are not going to eliminate but we will ensure we reduce it and we'll also ensure that even if we blunder even if we make a bad move it doesn't get carried away to our next games or next moves all right guys that will be it see you soon in the very first chapter seeing from opponent's perspective bye bye